came to ASU because of a generous academic scholarship and the opportunity to pole vault on the track team. And I also love the location and I like ASU's focus on research and sustainability. So I'm a pole vaulter on the ASU track team. It's really important to kind of stick with the routine, so that means getting enough sleep and eating well. And then I spend a lot of time visualizing, just kind of seeing the vault in your head and thinking about the things that I want to work on. And then at the end of the runway, you're holding the pole. You just focus in on a couple of things and then just let it loose. Uh, Linda, Linda's one you don't have to worry about. You know, She has everything that you want, kind of a little crazy, but uh, always wanting to, to do more. I've walked away many times and, and I'll see Linda pop back out here on her own time and, and do it. Because if I wrote it down on a paper, She's going to do it. You have to be fast and strong for pole vaulting, so we do a lot of running, sprint workouts, and lifting weights four times a week. Coach Barella is great because he just loves pole vaulting. He's a volunteer, so he's out there on his own time, and he just will do everything he can to help make the team better. I would say it's been it's been fun. Uh, more so, just I just appreciate just uh, her desire because she's she's got the mentality that, that you need somebody that really really wants to be good. It doesn't mean you're always going to be good, but she's got what you really need the wants. I love my teammates, and I really just love being part of the team, getting to travel and compete at the Division One level. So my freshman year, I PR'd by about a foot and vaulted 12 feet, and I've been working up since then. My goal is to go 13 this year, and I would really like to compete at the Pac-12 conference meet. I got started in research through the NASA Space Grant program, so I submitted my application and they paired me with a mentor, Dr. Chris Grappi. My main area of research is learning to design and build radio cameras. Um, like the one that's taking a picture of me right now. Most radio telescopes have cameras that have only one pixel, which is like trying to make a picture with a light meter. You have to do it point by point. And uh, what we do in my lab is learn to make cameras in the radio, which it turns out uh, there's been very little work done on that so far. And what Linda's helping us do is design and build an automated system to help measure these radio cameras because so we have to measure how well each pixel works and that takes a long time if it has to be done by hand. For what we want to do in astronomy, we want to learn how new stars and planets form. And the places where new stars and planets form are these big clouds of gas and dust in space called molecular clouds. So we need cameras to be able to take pictures of where these stars are forming. And we need to look in radio light because the, uh, cl these clouds of gas and dust are invisible in optical light. So I have to program the motor to spin at a certain rate. And then I also have to collect the data that's coming in from the receiver. And I also have to send commands to the receiver to change certain parameters. So there's basically three different things that I need to control. And so part of that is developing software to integrate all of that. And for me, it's kind of about curiosity. I think humans have a natural urge to explore, so research is how we can learn more about the universe we live in. Working in research, the whole idea is we don't already know the answer. They're doing something no one has ever done before. And it's uh, very gratifying to see a student tackle a problem, maybe thinking at the beginning that they can't do it, but they can do it. So I won't lie and say it's easy to be a student athlete in engineering, but it's definitely possible and it can be really rewarding. Woo! Good job, Linda! Yeah, good job! Nice job, Linda! Yes, it's your turn.